at the very beginning of the year, we got some big news from one of our longtime favorites, XP Logistics. The transportation roll-up that spent years consolidating the trucking industry. Management said they were exploring strategic alternatives. I mean, they wanted to sell off some of the businesses. But then the pandemic rolled in and M&A activity kind of ground to a halt. Even after the economy picked up again and COVID gave the freight industry a huge boost, XPO couldn't find a buyer that was willing to pay what they thought the business was worth. Well, it looks like they're doing something arguably even better for shareholders. Yep, XPO just announced that they're spinning off their entire logistics division, effectively splitting the company into a freight transportation business and a non-asset truck brokerage that would be the second largest contract logistics outfit in the world. I love it when companies break themselves up to unlock values. So let's take a closer look with Brad Jacobs, the chairman and CEO of XPO Logistics. Find out more about the spin off Mr. Jacobs. And welcome back to Mad Money. Great to see you, Jim. All right, so, Brad, I think that you're responding to the big themes that shareholders told you. Slim, simplify the story so everybody understands it and get some leverage down. How does this accomplish that? You're exactly right. So we've been on a mission for about a year now to really do a lot of self-reflection and to talk to our share owners, talk to our employees, talk with our board, talk with outside experts and say, how can we unlock all this tremendous value that's trapped inside this conglomerate structure? Because we only traded about nine and a half times EBITDA and our competitors traded 15, 16, as much as 19 times EBITDA. And the answer we got back was two things. You got to simplify the company it's too complicated, too many moving parts, and you got to get to be investment grade. And people consistently told us, Jim, if you do those two things, the universe of potential investors, of buyers for our stock will be much, much, much more. So by separating into two global segments, two separate public trading companies, two real powerhouses, leaders in logistics and transportation, we've got two strong companies that are really easy to understand. The logistics business, which is what happens in about 800 warehouses around the world in that part of the business and the transportation business, which 90 percent of the EBITDA comes from less than truckload and truck brokerage. All right. So, Brett, Will, uh, I've I've seen all the money and technology you put in logistics. It's the number one. It's the smartest logistics company in the world. Will other companies be able to tap into that now, giving you a much bigger revenue stream? Well, our customers tap into that and increasingly tap into that, you know, in our logistics business, we are squarely in the middle of this massive e-commerce boom. We have the largest outsourced e-com fulfillment platform in all of Europe. We're very big in omni-channel. We're huge in reverse logistics. And we have a big presence in cold chain. So all the hottest parts of supply chain powered by this e-com boom, we're right in the middle of that. You know, it is interesting. When I think about some of the trucking companies that I think you and I would say, hey, they're just OK. They trade at a higher valuation than yours. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean, I see the Expo. Everyone sees the Expo logistics trucks on the road. I always I always say to my wife, hey, I know these guys. They somehow they are worth less than all these other trucks that you see. It never made sense, Brad. You know, it never made sense to me. But keeping an op- keeping an open mind. And asking people, tell us the truth. What's going on? Why are we trading such a discount? It, and asking lots and lots of smart people, it really came down to two things. There was a reason for it. Too complicated, and you need to be investment grade. If you do those two things, a lot of things can really, really, really well happen. But, okay, so let's talk about what uh, people should understand, because, Brad, you're a, a very good deal maker. What are the comps, so to speak? How do we compare a logistics business that we think may be the best with other logistics businesses that, that, frankly, people don't know? Well, DHL is number one in the logistics side. We're number two. Uh, there's another company based in Switzerland called Cuninago, which is a fine company. There's another uh, logistics company in, in the UK called Clipper. And there's another one that's got logistics and some other things, too, called DSV uh, in Scandinavia. On average, they trade for about 15 times EBITDA. On truck brokerage side, Jim, the largest player in the market that we're the best comparable for is C.H. Robinson. They trade about 15 times. And then on the less than truckload side, Old Dominion trades at 19 times, not nine and a half times, 19 times. And Saya trades at 12 times. And on the these are all fine companies. When you look at the metrics, 
we're right up there and better in many ways. Now, at the at the same time, though, I, we just got some data about how business was. It looks like that that Cyber Monday was by far the biggest ever. I have to imagine that you might be able to get both parts at a price that is a little bit ridiculous, given how how much business FedEx has got and UPS has got. Because I, look, those are fine companies. You know that. I know that. But we've had we're having a boom right now. Oh, for sure. If we were valued just at the average of the multiples of our peers, our stock price would be roughly 50 percent higher than it is right now. So we're patient. You'll get there. Now, you mentioned cold storage. Are you part of uh, uh, of Warp Speed? We're not in the Warp Speed program, but the vaccine distribution is affecting everybody. and already is. They're doing trial runs. Our expedite division is taking a lot of stuff where we've got the refrigerated, we've got the temp control trucks. But we're not going to be right in the center of it like FedEx, uh, UPS, and DHL. They're going to get the lion's share, but there's, there's plenty of business to go around on the secondary part of it. Are you optimistic? That I we'll am. Just, th- I'm very you optimistic, are. yeah. Because you're a critical yeah. guy. I mean, you can say, look, it's a little disorganized and chaotic. If you tell me it's going well, I think all of us will feel pretty good. Look, life is disorganized and chaotic, <laughs> right. but you can find order and, and, and purpose within it. I think there, is, there are so many great people, great minds, great companies – Really being patriotic as well as a patriotic influence, the humanitarian. I, I, I think what the world is going to accomplish in the next few months on the distribution of the vaccine is really amazing. I mean, it really is humanity at, at its best. Oh, all right. One last thing. I know that you have done the last mile. You've done more parent pure, really done more work on last mile than anybody. I see lots of people buying bigger and bigger things online. It's just what people what happened. That's, again, your sweet spot. I think you should be valued more than the companies that have trucks that don't come to your house. I mean, I don't understand. If you it. want to argue, if you want an argument on that, you're going to have to talk to somebody else because I fully agree with you. Well, anyway, look, you've just I think you've done a great job. You built two great businesses. And I think uh, one, uh, let's say uh, one minus one equals three. I don't know how else to put it. But congratulations, Brad, for all you did for shareholders. Really good to see you. All the best. Okay. Thank you. That's Brad Jacobs, CEO of XPO Logistics. Guys, just on the earnings alone, this stock deserves to be substantially higher. This breakup is going to unlock a huge amount of value. May have money's back here for the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.